for joining us here on our live stream at New Birth Christian Center. It is our hope and prayer that this is an exciting, anointed, and revitalizing worship experience for you. When you are able, please be sure to visit us in person at New Birth Christian Center, located at 1234 William Moss Boulevard in the beautiful city of Stockton, California. You can also visit us online through Facebook and our website, newbirthstockton.com. Please be sure to like, comment, and share this video with your friends and family all over the globe. With your prayer and support, we can take this wonderful gospel from the neighborhood to the nation. Well, praise the Lord, everybody. I'm Pastor Sai, and first let me welcome and thank you for joining New Birth Christian Center as we go into praise and worship. Now, David said, I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. And so as we go into worship, go ahead and lift your hands, step your feet. Man, if you got to run around your coffee table a couple times, that's all right. As we go into worship, go into worship with a praise on your lips and join your heart. Come on and join us.
It is now tithing offering time here at New Birth Christian Center. At New Birth, we are believers in the complete word of Jesus Christ. His word in Malachi 3 and also Luke 6, among many others, instructs us to give freely and also offers natural and spiritual blessing to those who follow this guideline. At NBCC, we are continuously searching for new ways to meet the need in our community. Through financial resource, we are able to continuously hold community outreach events and aid providing resource for those who may be in need. If you would like to donate financially to the Ministry of New Birth Christian Center, please visit us online at newbirthstockton.com. God bless you. Please enjoy the rest of the service. Good morning. From our life room to your life room, this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it today. Our God has been good. We recognize him. So right there in your life rooms, you can put your hands together out his praises. We're talking about the rest for the restoring power of God on today. Come on, let's worship on today. Hallelujah. Whoa. Restoration has finally come. Been restored back to my place in God. Say restoration has finally come. Restored back to my place in God. What would I know about being restored if I never lost my place? What would I know about His mercy if I hadn't gotten out of grace? For it reminds me of the prodigal son after his righteous living, all the evil he'd done. Yet when he returned, his father received him home, gave him a ring of gold. Put him on a road, killed the fatty cat, gave him something he never ever had. Restoration. Oh, and I've been restored back to my place in God. We said restoration can finally come. Oh, I've been restored back to my place in God. Listen, restore the joy of my salvation. Oh, God, give Consecration, restore the life I once knew. Oh, today I'm giving my life back to you. And we just like to say, restore me. Yes, Lord, restore the joy. We say today, restore me. Oh, God, today, restore the joy. Today, revive me. Oh, Lord, revive me. Listen, I declare I'm restored, and I'm glad about it. I'm restored, and I'm glad about it. See, I've been renewed, and I'm glad about it. I've been renewed, and I'm glad about it. Works of his restoring power 
giving me back everything, making me even better than I was before. Come on, right where you are, give God praise. Give him glory. God, we honor you on today. We thank you for restoration. We thank you for renewal. We thank you for revival. We thank you for this year of our reset. We know that it's you, God, who's doing the work. And we give you all glory, honor, and praise. Come on right there where you are. Bless his wonderful name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For the Lord is good. And his mercy does endure forever. And we bless his wonderful name. The old song says he's done great things. So we bless his holy name. It's good to be here another Sunday morning. Giving God glory and honor and praise. We thank God for the wonderful things that he's doing in our lives. In the ministry in our city, and in our nation. A lot has transpired over this last week. Um, a lot has gone on, and we're still getting calls of those who have gone home to be with the Lord. We want you to know everyone who has been in touch with us that we are praying for you. Andre Crouch wrote a song. Somebody somewhere is praying just for you. So we want you to know not just uh, Bishop Charles and Pastor Lawanda, but the New Birth Christian Center family. We're praying for uh, families who, who, who've lost and we're praying for those who are in the hospital. And uh, We lost a dear, uh, a dear friend in Ohio um, to COVID and we're, we're praying for Spirit of Truth family there. Uh, and, 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 and the ministry. God is doing a great work. We begin saying that in last year, and that's still the same. His work is still great, and we thank him for his goodness. Excuse me. We thank him for his goodness. I'm going to go to Ezekiel, the 37th chapter, um, as I said, a lot has transpired over these last couple of, couple of weeks, and we inaugurated our new president. And as I stated before, we will pray for him just like we've prayed for the presidents before him, that God keep and cover and give him wisdom. And more than anything, grant him his spirit and that he be led by the spirit of God. And we thank God for the ability to be able to stand before God's people in this season and speak a word to God's people regarding what it is the Lord wants to do. You know, I want to be involved in what the Lord is doing. Let's go to Ezekiel, the 37th chapter. For the sake of time, and I'm going to go back and refer to the total chapter, but I'm going to read two verses. We're going to read Ezekiel, the 37th chapter, beginning at the 11th verse, and then we're going to read Romans, the 10th chapter, and the 8th verse. The 37th chapter, 11th verse reads, Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say our bodies are dried up, and our hope is perished. We are completely cut off. Therefore prophesy and say to them, thus saith the Lord God, thus saith the Lord God, thus saith the Lord God, behold, I will open your graves and cause you to come up out of your graves, my people, and I will bring you into the land of Israel. Then you shall know that I am the Lord when I have opened your graves and caused you to come up out of your graves, my people, and I will put my spirit within you and you will come to life and I will place you on your own land. Then you will know that I, the Lord, have spoken and done it, declares the Lord. Uh, we've been talking about the reset. 
and, 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 and we're gonna, we're, let, let's go to Romans, the 10th chapter, and the 8th verse, it reads, but what does it say? The word is near you, in your mouth, and in your heart. That is the word of faith, which we are preaching. We've been talking about the reset and pushing the button. This is the year, new birth, hear me. This is the year of the reset. And we are pushing the button. I want to encourage you on today. And if I, if I were to title my message, it would be prophesy the reset. Prophesy the reset. Prophesy the reset. You see, when, when we talk about prophecy, um, uh, and, and, and a lot is going on, in, in, especially in the church, uh, regarding prophecy right now, uh, Bishop Sean Cooper wrote uh, an, an article, uh, very powerful, and uh, if you want to read it, I shared it. it, it it's, it's, it's a powerful article that he wrote earlier this week on prophecy and some of the mistakes we make where prophecy is concerned. But understand this, God has given me the power and the authority to prophesy. As the leader of my home, I have the power and authority to prophesy, but it's getting uh, what God wants me to say, not just saying what I will. You see, prophecy is speaking the mind and will of God. Prophecy is speaking the mind and the will of God, and it comes from intimate time with God. If you're going to prophesy, it's not something that you do just because and speak some words and call it prophetic, which is what a lot of people are doing. They're speaking words and calling it prophetic. But when you have been in the presence of the Lord and you begin to get his mind and his will on certain things, what is his will concerning your home, concerning your finances, concerning your children and your marriage? What is the will of God? You see, if you don't know, it's time for you to hit your face again and get his word for it, not just in prayer, but in the reading and studying of his word, he begins to speak to us what it is he wants to do for us. There is something great and powerful, something mighty God wants to do, not just in us, not just for us, but he wants to do it through us. But we've got to get back to spending time with God. You see, the, uh, what we receive from God, it must be seen or heard from the mouth of God. Ezekiel here is, is, is receiving something from the mouth of God. If we're going to prophesy and prophesy accurately and correctly, it must come from the mouth or the word of God before we say it. You see, we've got to be able to see it or hear it before we say it. When we talk about prophecy, it, it, it's something we must see or, 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 or hear uh, before we say it. You see, God takes Ezekiel to a place to prepare him. He takes him to a place where he's going to prepare him to give his word. You see, a lot of people are giving words unprepared. They're, they're giving words because they think that's what they're supposed to do, and they're not spending any time with God, and they're just coming up with something. And then when that something doesn't happen, they begin to blame it on the people's faith. No, it's, sometimes it's not the people's faith. It's because God never said it in the first place. God takes Ezekiel to a place because he sees what's going on with his people. And he's preparing. <laughs> he's preparing a prophet. Hear what I'm saying. For every situation you will ever go through, God has already prepared a word for it. For what I'll say it again, for whatever in life you'll go through, God has already prepared a word for it. I started in this 11th verse uh, for the sake of time, but I'm going to refer uh, 
um, to, the, to, to, to the first uh, 10 verses also. God speaking to Ezekiel. The, the, the first verse says, the hand of the Lord was upon me. The hand of the Lord was upon me and he brought me or he carried me out by the spirit. God carries when we will dare to get into the spirit. God will move us by that same spirit. The Holy Ghost that we are filled with. And, and I know that there are a lot of people that question prophecy today. Prophecy is just as real today as it was in the days of Ezekiel. There are still men and women of God who hear directly from the throne of God for his people. God is still, God is just as much concerned with his people today as he was in those days. He is still wanting to bring us to a place of healing and health and wholeness and peace and prosperity. Prosperity, just like he did back then. Jesus the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's explaining in the 11th verses. Beginning at the 11th verse, he's explaining the vision. He said, God carried me out. And he brought me by the Spirit, the first verse. And he set me down in the middle of of a valley and it was full of bones we talk about the bones and, and, and he, he, he explains in, in the 11th verse that the bones is the whole house of Israel it's the whole house of Israel the, 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 whole, the whole body of God's people and, 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 and God is speaking to the whole house. God is speaking to whole houses right now. If you are part of a membership of a church, it's time to find out what God is saying for your ministry. What is he saying to your whole body? I know, like I was talking about on Wednesday, we have our personal time, but there is a time that God wants to speak to the whole body because either the whole body moves forward or the whole body doesn't move at all. I can tell my arm to go to the back door all I want to if my feet doesn't take it it's not going anywhere God is talking to the whole body there's a time when we're yes we are selfish about the things of God concerning us but then there's a time we have to take concern with what's going on in the whole body you see first the whole body he's talking about is the church universal then he's talking about new birth Christian center and then he's talking about our homes first now first of all our homes but then it goes from there into our ministries and communities and and and, and, and then begins to reach out until it reaches the world God is talking to his body explaining the vision he says these bones are crying out hear what I'm saying God hears your cry whatever it is all you've got to do is open up and begin to talk to him I don't care what it is he's listening They're saying in the second verse, he's, or in the second verse, he, he says they're very dry, meaning they've been there for a, a, a while. They've gone through the process of decomposition. They've gone through the process where the muscles have broken down and the flesh has left and, 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 and they've laid there and bleached in the sun. They've been exposed to whatever element has come. They've been exposed to whatever reptile has come to take a bite from it. Why? Because they're dead and there's nothing left. You see, when you get to a place where you feel like there's nothing left, you just begin to just lay there. He says they're very dry. And, and, and they say our hope is perished. Hmm. They're very dry. And they say our hope is perished in the 11th verse. Our bones are dried up. We've gone through the process of death. We're very dry. And our hope is perished. 
speaking of death and, and when, he, when he was talking to him about the vision earlier in the chapter uh, and it talks about the, the, the heaps of bones uh, that there were many and, and, and because you, you see he was speaking as if war had ravaged the nation and there was nothing left but bones scattered. Israel at this time was a dispersed people. A dispersed people. A depressed people. People, nothing, uh, a disjointed people. Speaking of their death, they had no land, they had no king, they had no temple. They were a people divided and dispersed. Everything they have is now gone. A sister growing up used to sing a song, when your little hope is gone, don't fall in despair. Just remember God is standing there. There are people who are now divided. I was talking to someone on yesterday and, and, and we, were, uh, we were talking about uh, how long things have been going on. And, and, and I said, you know, our church hasn't met or, or this has been going on now in almost a year. I was, uh, I was reading an article that it's in this month that they discovered the first case. Uh, in, a, a year ago, they discovered the first case in America, you see, and it's been a year. This has been a year of tragedy. It's been a year of death. It's been a year of hurting. It's been a year of dispersion. It's been a year of difficulty. It's been a year of being disjointed, but God is still watching. God is still concerned. It's been a year that we've been dislocated. You see, and to be dislocated, with no hope of future connection. I was saying on the other day, one thing that the church has to be careful of is that we don't get comfortable in this season. Don't get too comfortable on that couch. It's coming to an end. Don't get too comfortable not gathering as the people of God. It's going to come to an end. Don't get comfortable where you are because God is going to bring this thing to a close in the name of Jesus. And I'm looking forward to gathering again in and at the house of God. God wouldn't tell us to gather even more as the day approaches if he knew we wouldn't be able to. Hear what I'm saying. God is going to bring this thing to a close. And I'm not talking about because of a vaccine. And if you need it, go get it. It is not the devil. Hear what I'm saying. But whatever we're going to do, we're going to do by faith. But there is a longing. You see, there is a longing inside me to look to my right and in the front row see Mom Helen. There's a longing for me to look out and see the Abdullahis. There is a longing in me to see Brother Sam, Sister Kim walk in. There's a longing to see the Ellis family come in the room and stand and clap. There is a longing in me for these things. You see, I used to have a problem with my knees and with my, uh, with my shoulders. Uh, when I played football, they would dislocate. I've had dislocated shoulders and dislocated knees. Today, if I watch a football game and I see someone hurt themselves, I cringe. I cringe because I know the pain of dislocation. That's a, that, that's a, you see, and the, 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 the thing about it, most of the time when dislocation comes, you have to deal with the pain until somebody comes to reset your joint. And it's in that reset that you feel the best comfort. It's like you breathe. Because all this time being disjointed, being dislocated, you were in pain. These were a people in pain. So he's speaking to their future connection. Because they have no hope. You see, some of you have lost hope. And God reconnecting something that's been disjointed and dispersed.
something that's been through the death process and you don't even know where the bones are. You know, you know it, it, you, 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 you've been saying things like, I don't think it can never be like it was. Hear what I'm saying. By the power of the Holy Ghost, it can be better than it was because we're going to prophesy the reset. He's carried Ezekiel to this place and he's allowing him to see by the spirit the condition of a nation. You see, I don't care what news outlet you watch. They all speak to one thing, the condition of our nation. Whether it's on the left or whether it's on the right or whether it's in the middle, all the outlets are speaking to the condition of our nation. And it's going to take us to wake up, get in the spirit, and see what God is saying concerning our nation. We are a nation divided. We are a nation dislocated. We are a nation dispersed. But God can bring it all together again. While he's showing uh, the prophet this, he asked them the question, can these bones live? <laughs> some, of, some of us have been asking that question. You know, is, is this going to be all right? I lost my job. Am I ever going to be able to find a job that good? My benefits are gone. I, am I able, am I going to be able to take care of my family if they get sick? And I, I, I don't have the money I used to have. Are we going to be able to feed our children like we used to? Can these bones live? My child has begun to mess with drugs. Will he be able to make it out? My spouse is gone and coming back home when they want to. Is this going to be able to be healed? Can these bones live people aren't talking about the ministry like they used to I don't know who's coming back when the doors open can these bones live God is asking us the prophet says God you know in other words, I'm trusting you and I'm trusting the word you're going to speak concerning these bones It's time, it, hear what I'm saying? It's time for some of you to get the negative remarks away from your bones. It's time for some of you to stop listening to some of them folks you've been listening to. Amen, church. It's time, hear what I'm saying? It's time for some of you to hang up the phone now. Because what you are receiving is not what God wants you to hear. And he's asked, God is asking you, can these bones live? And it's time for you to respond to God. God, only you know, I trust whatever you say. I trust you. I put my trust, God, in your knowledge. He asked the prophet, do you know what's going to happen with these bones? And the prophet says, I put my trust in your knowledge. God says, then I want you to prophesy over these bones. I, 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 he said, I want you to prophesy in the fourth verse. Prophesy over these bones the word of the Lord. In other words, it's time for you to speak a reversal of this process that's taken place. I don't care how bad it looks. I don't care how dry they are. I don't care how bleached they are. Speak a word to the process. Speak a word in your home. Speak a word over your city. Speak a word to the murder and violence that's going on. Speak a word to our youth. Speak a word that brings them out of what they've been involved in. Speak a word. Not just any word. Speak the word of the Lord. You see, you've got to understand that you have the power to speak. Yes, we thank God for prophets and prophecies, but God has given you the power and the authority, especially those who cover your homes. Hear what I'm saying. It's time for you to speak a word of faith over your house. It's time for you to speak a word of faith over your body. It's time for you to speak a word of faith, healing, and deliverance that only God can bring. Speak a word. He says, dry bones. 
in the fourth verse. And he said unto me again, prophesy over these bones and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. In other words, he's saying you command the dry bones to listen to what God is saying. You speak to your situation. Stop allowing your situation to speak to you. You speak to depression and you speak to loneliness. You speak to heartache. You speak to sickness. You speak to your doubt and say, I want you to stop right now and hear the word of the Lord. God is speaking. I'm speaking into somebody's home right now. And in the name of Jesus, you hear the word of the Lord. Hear what God is saying. Pay attention to the words of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God, these bones I will cause breath to enter into you so you might come alive and I'm going to put sinews on you. I'm going to make flesh grow and I'm going to put breath in you so you can come alive and you will know that I am the Lord. This is what I want you to tell the bones. I want you to tell them that that skeleton that's been there, some things are going to have to begin to happen to that skeleton. Look, don't leave your skeletons in the closet. Bring them out so God can heal them. <laughs> I know folks that you better leave those skeletons in, the, in that closet. Folks don't point at you. I'm not saying tell folks all your business either. What I am saying is allow God to deal with the skeletons that's been there for a long time. You see, because if you, if, if you allow God to deal with everything else except the skeletons, they come back to get you. They stay, you see, the devil will allow you to keep them in the closet until you're doing real good. And then he brings them out and lays them before everybody, puts them back in the valley. But you see, God is going to do something with that skeleton. Dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. God is about to do something, and that's what you've got to begin to tell folks. Look, I, I know what situation I've been in, but God is about to do something in my life. Romans 10, 8, you see, uh, when we understand what God is saying, but what does it say? The word is near you in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith, which we are preaching. There is a word that's inside your mouth for your house. There is a word that's inside your mouth for your children. There is a word that's inside of your mouth for your sickness. There is a word that's inside. It's in your mouth. And God is challenging us to speak it. It's as close as your mouth. The fifth and sixth verse, God tells him, prophesy the reset. <laughs> prophesy the putting together. You see, you've got to push the button on your prophecy so you can push the button on your miracle. You've got to push the button to your prophecy so you can push the button on your miracle. You've got to be bold enough to say what you might be afraid to say, what the enemy is trying to keep in your mouth. It's time to let it out. I will have joy prophesy to yourself. I will in the name of the Lord Jesus, the dry bones of peace come alive. I will have joy in my finances. My bills will be paid. And I'm going to prophesy and then I'm going to get up and push the button. I'm going to get up and look for that good job that, that the Lord told me he could have. The, the bones are being reconnected. Hear what I'm saying, new birth. We may be dispersed by distance, but in the name of the Lord Jesus, I prophesy the reconnection of the bones of new birth Christian Center. Bones speak to the structure. The structure of a thing. You, you, when they talk about a building, a, a building can be burned all the way down. When they look at it, the first question they ask, what do the bones look like? Well, you know, we can rebuild. They still have good bones. Hear what I'm saying? You still have 
good bones. I don't, I don't care how long they've sat out and bleached. And I don't, I don't care. An animal may have come, picked one up, took it way a mile, uh, a mile away. But when God calls something together, no matter where that bone is, it's got to come back. My leg bone has to come back to me. I don't care where it went through the process of dislocation and dispersion. He said, on top of that, the sinew is going to come on top of the bones. Now that you have your structure and your foundation, I'm going to give you what you need to reconnect, reconnect everything. I'm resetting this thing. So the bones have be, are, are, are in place now. And now I'm sending you the sinew. I'm laying on you the sinew, which is going to connect those things, that, that, that the, the, the structure and the foundation that have been tied together. It's going to tie things together. And the muscles are going to come back which is going to give strength to that body that's not been able to have not been able to move not been able to do the will of God and we're speaking to it and God is saying I'm laying it all back in line and on top of that he says I'm going to put the flesh I'm going to cover it I'm going to cover all this power with skin. I'm going to lock it in. You've got to know what's inside you. And God is saying, it's time for my people. I'm recovering them. I'm sealing their power so they can know what's inside. He said, I'm allowing you to see the process so you understand what's in you. I'm allowing you to see your marriage so you know what's there. I'm allowing you to see the potential of your children so you stop speaking death and not life. I'm allowing you to see the power of your finances so you'll never be in this financial condition again. I'm allowing you to see what's going on in your ministry so you can have life in it like never before. God is bringing things together. And he's going to cover it and the next thing he does he's going to breathe the breath of life. He's going he's going to breathe the breath of life. Genesis 2:7 says God formed man from the dust of the earth and then he breathed into them the breath of life and man became a living soul. God formed you. Then he breathed in you. The same God in creation. Hear what I'm saying. The same God in creation. The same God who created Adam. The same God who fixed the garden. The same God who supplied every need. The same God who fed him with multiple streams. The same God who forgave him for messing up. The same God that covered him while he went is the same God who will breathe into your situation on today. The breath of God, the life of God, the spirit of God. He wants it resting in us. Someone wrote a song that says, I need your spirit to fall fresh on me. Jesus said, I want you to go to the upper room and wait there. In Acts, the, Acts, the second chapter, the Holy Ghost comes and it rests on them. And then it rests in them and they're filled with the power of the Holy Ghost. The breath of life blows through the upper room. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on us and rest freshly in us. So prophesy the reset prophesy speak to it don't be afraid I pray a holy boldness to you I sang that song at the beginning restoration has finally come I've been restored back to my place in God what would I know about being restored if I never lost my place you see I know those who claimed and have never, you know, those ones that just slipped right off God's lap and just, you know, just walked the earth. I'm not that one. I've needed his renewal many, many, many times, and I thank him that he never failed me, and I'm here to tell you, neither will he fail you. He's waiting to fill you with his precious gift, with his spirit, with himself. 
We used to sing a song, don't let this moment pass you by. Jesus is waiting with his arms open wide. He's willing to supply every need in your life. Take my advice. Don't let this moment pass you by. I'm going to pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you. God, I prophesy to the dry bones. I prophesy to the hurting places. I prophesy to those who feel dislocated and dispersed. I prophesy to those who feel like their bones have lain in the valley far too long and nothing can happen with it. I prophesy to depression. And I speak life. Wind of Pentecost, blow. Wind of Pentecost, blow. Wind of Pentecost, blow. The name of Jesus to every hurting heart to every broken heart, to every hurting home, blow. To that mother who's caring for those children who doesn't know how they're going to make it, blow in that home. Let them know that you're there to be their source and their resource. To that father who feels alone and separated, blow on him. Let him feel your presence once again like never before. To that ministry right now and that pastor who's going through, give him a touch of your peace right now. To that heart that's desperate right now, give them to know that you never leave us nor do you forsake us, but you're with us always, even until the end of the world. If you don't know the Lord, I want you to pray this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, I come to you a sinner. And my sin is always before you. You know me. So I surrender my will. I surrender my life. I surrender all of me to you, Lord Jesus. Take me and make me brand new. Make my spirit right. Refresh my mind. Give me the reset that I've been hearing about today. I receive it in the name of Jesus. We want to thank you. And now, right, right now, your life is brand new. Your bones are coming, have come together. And you are right now moving in the right direction. Don't you stop. You keep progressing. Thank you, Jesus. Watch what God will do. I'm going to receive the offering. God has been good to us. I'm not going to take a lot of time. God has been good to us. And if you want to reset in your finances, that means you get up and do what you know is right to do. The tithe, one dime out of every dollar belongs to God. And above that, that which we give with the free will and the glad heart belongs to God. You release it to God and watch the Lord's blessing rest on you. He's already been good to you. My tithe is acknowledging his goodness. And the offering above that, that what I give with a free will and a glad heart, it's just saying it's because I love the house I worship in. I'm going to care for my house. My house will not lack because of me. My house will be greater because I'm a part time talent and treasure listen i enjoyed the lord with you on today from my life room to yours we're getting ready to go back into worship and again from our life room to yours the lord bless you we love you show the love of the lord